the other members, uh, officers, I don't think there's any members of the body for president tonight. And welcome to the strategy group meeting. The first item tonight is to sign off the minutes of our meeting held on the 26th of May 2016. Are you happy that I do so as a correct record? Great. 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 Apologies for absence. Any other apologies? I'm sure if don't get noted. Declarations of members' interests. I'll ask you to declare it now or if not at the time of the item on the agenda. Are we going to discuss it? Are there any declarations now? Okay, thank you. I just want to make a couple of changes to the agenda tonight in terms of the order. Um, the first one being is that the capital revenue account item number 81 will be taken after the Lewis and Hall restoration item, which is on item 97. There's a reason for that, we'll come on to a bit later on. That's the first point. Uh, oh, sorry, it's the other item, of course, was the Molten Neighborhood Development Plan item, which has been deferred to our meeting in September. Because we're waiting for more information to come through before we come back and finalise the recommendations from that particular plan. So, apart from that, the agenda items will continue in the order they're in. So the first item tonight is corporate issues, which is corporate risk management policy and talk of it. Uh, you have the obviously covering paper and also the actual policy itself. And if I can hand over to Tony to make a couple of comments. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, the um, corporate risk management policy is uh, back before uh, members and uh, just uh, approved by council back in uh, 2013. So. Uh, do a review. Um, the review process has taken it um, through the risk uh, management working group who considered the policy and some comments that have risen from the corporate governance committee uh, when uh, corporate governance were looking at the uh, risk management process earlier in the year. Um, the um, results of the deliberations is essentially two changes. Um, the first one being um, uh, change to the risk appetite, which is explained in paragraph uh, 4.2, um, where the uh, catastrophic risk in financial terms has been recategorised as the million pounds plus. And the second change uh, relates to the risk matrix profile, um, which is set up in uh, paragraph 4.3. And essentially that moves a, um, a risk uh, uh, funding down um, within, sorry, a risk funding up within the uh, appetite, which is shown at the back of the uh, policy document itself on page 20 of the papers. Um, aside from that, um, there's some minor changes to uh, uh, terminology. Um, and in addition, we've uh, brought along the risk management toolkit. Um, which again has been revised in the same two issues um, and revised as a toolkit um, uh, from a process and guidance document. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Tony. Any comments or questions? If not, are you happy to agree the recommendation? Great, thank you. Great. Thank you. We now move on to housing and environmental health issues. The first item is food and health and safety service plans and health work. Thank you. Um, the purpose of this report is, is an annual requirement uh, to bring the services plans for food safety and health and safety before the council as required by the Food Standards Agency and the Health and Safety Executive. If it's not possible <coughs> to produce the fi final versions of these plans until after the 31st of March 16, because they require reports on the achievement of the previous year's plans and data for this year, Next, uh, which were not available until after the year end. Although there are minor differences between the requirements of the plans, the major requirements are common to both plans. And these are items uh, item item, um, point four of the papers. Um, in addition, uh, th there are two additions for the food safety only and these are, one, there must be procedures to, and capacity to deal with food safety, and two, foodstuffs must be sampled in accordance with central government guidance. There are no significant changes to the 2015-16 service plans, but minor changes which 
are in, which are uh, sorry, the, the minor changes included are outlined in section 4.2 of the papers. The approval of the achievement of the 2016-17 Food Safety and Health and Safety Service Plan will satisfy the requirements of the Food Standards Agency and the Health and, Sa uh, Health and Safety Executive. Therefore, I ask that it be recommended that the Council approve the Food Service Plan and Health and Safety Service Plan for the year April 2016 to the 31st of March 2017. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Are there any comments or questions? Councillor Randall. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was just reading through and I was just interested how you carry out these things. It's got like migrant workers to improve the health and well-being of migrant workers in the workplace. Um, knowing that some of these car washes um, have had um, slavery, um, they've been found. So I just wondered how actually you go about doing that. Really? Um, through you, Chair, um, where with incidents are reported, we do work in a multi agency way with police and customs and excise and immigration. So, where those incidents, sometimes they might be identified by our inspection from other departments. So, in a nutshell, it's a multi agency approach to ensuring um, those, those things don't happen, really. So, do you put that in place before it happens, or do you wait till it's reported and then? Well, it um, we've already got um, a risk basis, that's how frequently premises are visited, so depending on the level of risk of the kind of operation they are and also their previous performance will dictate how often they're visited and inspected. Um, and then obviously there's reports in between, so it's both proactive and reactive. Thank you. I'll be happy to agree the recommendation. We move on to the second item of this portfolio, which is funding from the formal housing scheme, Naval Coast Pool, in Council of Thank you, Chair. Uh, the purpose of this report is to consider the request for funding to, towards an affordable housing development in Gormston. The council currently has a funding available to support affordable housing schemes. This funding is from commuted sums, pay, uh, sum payments, which have been made as a result of housing developments in in Middlemore in Daventry. The council's policies normally require that developments of five units or more affordable housing is provided on sites as part of the mixed tenure development scheme. In a small number of cases, community payments have been negotiated whereby instead of on-site provision, a payment has been made enabling the council to deliver affordable housing elsewhere. The council works closely with the registered providers at both officer and at member levels notably through affordable housing panel, which meets on a quarterly basis. The, through these mechanisms, registered providers have been encouraged to come forward with schemes which lack funding and might benefit from the community payments to help bring them forward. It is considered that the proposal should be supported because it is a scheme which meets an, an identified need and is deliverable. Despite requests from other registered providers to bid for funding, no alternative schemes have been presented. The terms of the community payment from the Middlemore scheme allow the funding <coughs> to be used for affordable housing anywhere in the district. And whilst this site is not within Daventry Town, it is at least a way of delivering affordable housing. It will be appropriate to provide the funding requested as this will result in the delivery of 12 affordable units to meet an identified need and contribute towards meeting corporate plan target H3. The funding is held for this purpose. Without the funding, the scheme for 12 homes is unlikely to progress. There are no sites nearer to Middlemore from where the community sums arose currently available. I therefore ask that it be recommended that the application for funding for 176,000 towards an affordable housing scheme at Maple Cross uh, close, sorry, Braunston, be approved with the funding to be drawn from planning obligation funds for this purpose held by the Council. The funding agreement will be valid for a period of 18 months from the date of this resolution. Many thanks to the Thank you, Councillor Warren. Any questions or comments? I'm oh, sorry, Councillor Gilbert first. Um, I'd just like to say I support this uh, recommendation. Yeah. And if anything, I'd like to see more of these recommendations We all know that. Um, the, the young people and the young families have to move out to villages, they cannot afford to move back to villages where the family is, 
and it really is a good uh, accommodation that supports the um, providing affordable housing in a village environment. Thank you, Councillor Gilbert. Councillor Randall? Yeah, mine, mine was only just to ask that it says um, that the council works closely with registered providers at both officer and member levels, notably through the affordable housing panel. Um, I just wondered who sits on that affordable housing panel. <coughs> I actually chair that. Right, okay. And uh, the, there are members from the council and uh, various uh, registered providers um, from around the district who, who operate within the, within the county. And is that, is that all with affordable housing providers? Or yes, they? yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I'm pleased to say that uh, um, this um, scheme went through planning several weeks ago. It was welcomed by the local parish council um, and uh, they look forward to it coming to fruition. Um, yet again, we are uh, the enablers for want of a better word for getting a scheme forward. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks to the Council Board. Any more comments? If not, I have to agree the recommendation. Three, three, two. Well, thank you, Councillor Warren. We now move on to community, culture, and literary issues. The first one here is updated anti social behaviour policy and procedures. Councillor Gilbert. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, basically, you can see if you've read this report, it's about updating the um, anti social behaviour policy and procedures and the advice is that they be adopted. I think it's worth noting that the policy has been updated by the Community Safety Partnership Manager and also the Community Safety Officer. There's a couple of items I'd like to refer to. Firstly, on page 64, uh, reference 4.1, the last uh, paragraph, the section on reporting and recording. Investigation and taking action have all been abbreviated as they were felt to be overly wordy and prescriptive. The experience of officers is that the caseload renders many of the clauses, such as those around prioritisation of response, unnecessary. Additionally, as so much of the work is now shared with partners, a prescriptive procedure is inappropriate. And that's a fact. We are now having more and more involvement in partnership working, and I think that's to be committed. Next, I, I just refer you to page 72, part of the draft version, paragraph 1, time scale. Um, it is recognised that early resolution will in most cases prevent escalation and result in the greatest level of customer satisfaction. And I think we should all work on that. Finally, I'd like to emphasise these revisions do not mean a more tolerant attitude towards administration behaviour but to tighten up certain aspects of the policy, which is to be welcomed. So I would ask strategy to approve this. Thank you, Councillor Hills. Uh, any comments or questions? Councillor Randall. Yeah, I have, um, just on section five, yeah. um, I just wondered that if there is um, vulnerable people coming in with um, mental health, obviously you don't always know that they have, because it could be a first time visit. Um, is there uh, support staff on premises, or do they have to bring an agency with them? As a matter of routine, whether it's through community safety or any other frontline service such as housing, whenever um, frontline staff identified that there might be mental health or other vulnerability, then they would always, at that point, engage other partners. They often have support workers already in place. If they don't, we do referrals. Only last week we had somebody um, making suicidal comments um, to us on the phone, and we immediately. Um, we immediately involve police, doctors, and the other That's what they're all going to do. Thank you. That's very good to hear that, Maria. Thank you for that. Another comment, you're happy to approve the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second item here, which qualified for us, even though it didn't fairly interest earlier, is the Aging World Down Tradition. More subtle than others, actually, Councillor Howard, Amy, I don't know. I do apologise for that. But uh, I'm just referring to myself there. But uh, uh, that's Councillor Hills. Thank you, Chair. Um, Aiding Will and Gaventry, uh, uh, this is a resolved item. I welcome the fact that the report has actually been written by the District Council and also with input from the Gaventry District Forum. 
which was printed as known as Dot Dantry over 50 is fine. I certainly welcome that. If you look at page 82 of the draft done in research and consultation, at the end of the paragraph, it's worth noting that over 600 responses have already been received, and I know our staff and officers have worked very, very hard on this. The last paragraph from page 83, um, it's worth noting the strategy does not define old age or older people. In fact, we leave that to the uh, perception and also a variety of other factors which have to be taken into account. The key issues are... Well, I'm I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> They're all important, and I would just like to highlight that these include the impact of isolation and loneliness and the increase in awareness of mental health issues and the understanding of conditions such as dementia, which I think are vitally important. To me, this is an important consultation. We want our residents to age well, so I will ask strategy to support this. It's good to see such a helpful response actually, to the consultation, actually. Yeah, that's very encouraging. Very encouraging yes. yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions, comments, or queries? Councillor Randall. Yes, sorry, yeah, I've only got one question, and on page 83 it says improving access to transport services. Yes. Um, anybody who um, needs to get to Northampton General who haven't got a car and can't afford that um, would have to go on a bus, and obviously there's no direct link to the hospital. Is that anything that would be considered at all anywhere? Um, through you, Chairman, this is a consultation draft, so if you, if you feel strongly that that's something that should be considered, then I would suggest that you put that in. Um, in your response. That's yeah, my answer would be the sorry. It is a consultation. Therefore, if people want to make this known, I suggest they do so. I think the point Councillor Raven went to the very valid one, actually. Yeah. The more fans are generous than you to get when you get more fans. Yeah. 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 Certainly yeah. agree. Fair point. Uh, Councillor, uh, sorry. Sorry to butt in there, Jim. Well, that is a valid point. And also, in light of the fact that we are going to be spending some time planning externally outside of Daventry and yes. maybe making some of these routes more difficult to access, it does make a lot of sense to think about it. Is there a car scheme within the within Daventry that yeah, just provide both the minibus and also a volunteer car and you just pay um a slight amount per mile. Yeah, so it's um quite it's a low level. Eighteen pounds I think it is in terms of general so it's quite, yeah. yeah. Significant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, now I see that could go to your villages. Yes, it can be. Just goes the whole lot. You quite like that. I think it's worth noting that uh, they actually see quite a lot of support from them in this weekend. It's, it's, a, it's a, an excellent service, it but yes, it does cost. It does. <coughs> Okay, well, thank you. Are you happy to read the resolved item in front of us? Yeah, that would be very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Hills. We move on now to environment issues, future provision of environmental services. Next steps, Councillor Gilbert. Thank you, Chair. You have before you a report with proposals for the future design of PDC's waste and recycling service. As you all know, we currently have a joint service with MDC on the contract to Amy. This contract is due to end in June 2018. Of all the services we deliver, this is the highest profile frontline service and the one with the most financial risk attached. Following on from the extensive consultation we have held, we now need to make a decision on the service design. Section, point, section 4.1 of the report gives an urgent view of the service costs with section 4.2 explaining what we have done so far regarding consultation, details of the service we've consulted on and the findings of the consultation. I'm pleased to advise that this has been one of the most successful consultations as a council we've held and thanks must go to the communication team for his having been such an effective campaign to engage residents of the district. I myself, I, um, I felt as if I was being pimped out at one stage. It was on this radio, that radio, this TV, I've even done the radio this week. So, um, congratulations to the communication team for getting the message out there. 
Uh, I think we had about 934 from their many responses, which was very good. The details of the responses, the analysis of these responses, are all contained within the body of the report. The most significant concern raised by residents was would a three weekly collection increase flight to him? I understand this concern and therefore detailed investigations were undertaken by officers which confirmed that this would not be the case. Details of nine other three weekly services can be found in Appendix 2 and how they have found the implementation of a three weekly collection. Page 6 of the report is quotes from both Burry and Somerset confirming they did not experience any increase in flight to him and that the three weekly service had had the effect of increasing recycling rates, which is what we all want to do. Details on other aspects of the consultation can be found in 4.2.4. 4.2.5 and 6 of the report details the positions regarding the relationship with NCC and the payment of recycling credits and the pressures concerning costs. In summary, the proposal regarding the waste service is that we pursue the 1, 2, 3 service with the next step of the process being to identify the best mode of direct delivery i.e. in-house, shared service with another authority, or outsource to a contractor. For the members who did not attend the member development session, the, the 123 service is a, a weekly recycling food collection service, a fortnightly green waste <coughs> service, and a three-weekly residue waste service. If we now move to the other services under the environmental umbrella, 4.3.2 4.3.3, detail options for the cleansing and landscape services. It is considered that the cleansing contract could either form part of the waste contract or could be a standalone contract and that the grounds maintenance service could also be delivered using smaller standalone contracts. It should be noted that DDC have also listened to and worked in partnership here with parish councils which have seen Moulton and Overstone expressing an interest in undertaking some cleansing themselves. Other parishes expressing interest in maintaining their own closed churchyards. There have also been um, approaches with Dundee Town Council to see if they wish to uh, revitalise the market service, working in partnership with DDC. And I understand they um, have an external report going to their next full council. Um, approaches with NCC on the HRWCs has not been as effective, um, but I do have a meeting set with my equivalent portfolio holder for the next couple of weeks. Section 5 of the report lists the implications of the approach I'm proposing will have on the council. So to summarise or conclude, we have two years until the current contract ends. The delivery of environmental services is complex, complex and the process of procurement lengthy. We now need to agree the form of the service the council will cooperate and identify funding to do this and I therefore ask that you support the recommendations before you. Members of the Councillor um, Gilbert. This side sounds on page 117, two lines from the top. It does say 2.000 million, so it's not 2,000 million. Because there's a dot in there, because obviously you see that first of all you might think it's 2,000 million. Uh, <laughs> because uh, there's seems a strange way of putting it, but it's even. Uh, but it's also going to say, I think I'm really encouraged about the involvement of the parish and the council. And it's about local choices, isn't it, in different areas. So I think that really is helpful time to do it now when we're looking at this review to see what they may want to do for their own parishes and their own town, in the case of the town council. And there's an opportunity for everyone to get involved in that. So I think that's very welcome. Right, open for questions and comments. Chairman, um, I, I mean, I welcome this. Um, I circulated an email with uh, a link to um, a couple of um, councils that actually operate it, and you know, the people I speak to are, are in favour it. I welcome it. I hope it goes through. Um, I'm concerned with recommendation three. Is that separate from what is on the same paper? On page uh, page 22 of the so big paper. Two separate ones, boys. Two separate. Okay, thank you. 
any other comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Adam? I've got lots, really. Um, okay. The whole of the contract, uh, to me, has been um, pretty much, seems to be, especially from public perception, a disaster. Um, bin, the bin collections, you know... Sorry, was, sorry I just didn't get this right. You were the member of the permanent session with Councillor Adam. I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. So you're talking about the past or where we're moving to next? Yeah, it will lead on to that because okay. obviously, you know, Miss Bins, that's hugely increased by hundreds of percent. Um, you know, complaint after complaint is still coming in now, still weekly coming in on bins not being collected, dog poo bins overflowing. It's just been ongoing through the whole of the contract. Um, so, first, I want to know how we're going to resolve that and not fall into that ever again. Um, and the bin collection um, on the consultation when we've done the consultation on um, dog fouling um, they were out um, in the public um, speaking to the public none of this there was no public consultation done anywhere um, I'm still speaking to people now that have got no idea about this three week bin collection a lot of people don't read that much recording which I've often said they don't find the Dab Express especially people out further out in the village it's more <coughs> very rarely do you find somebody reading them um, following the Dab Express so so many people are still totally unaware of this collection and just you know I, I welcome the recycling on the wheelie bin because that's been a major factor as I've said with um, rubbish blowing around but the three weekly bin collection on the back bin, I just do, I just don't agree with. And the council guild comes to respond to that. Yes, okay. Um, we are where we are with the current contract. So yes, um, that was an outcome specification. I, we're not proposing to use that type of specification going forward. So hopefully um, we will be resolving those issues. As for people not knowing about the weekly collection, my experience is different. I've been going to meetings in my day job and people have been approaching me about, oh, what's all this? I've had to explain <coughs> the system to them. I've gone to my own doctors to see my own doctor and I've had people in reception come up to me and I've had to explain um, the system to them. So I am surprised um, that your concept is, is different to mine. And as for <coughs> the uh, rubbish overflow, we've listened to the residents of the district we're not going forward with boxes any more. We're going forward with bins with lids, which hopefully should address that issue. Thank you, Councillor Gilbert. Councillor Chandler. <coughs> thank you, Chairman, and thank you for allowing me to speak, not being a member of the group. Um, two comments, really. We often hear this idea that people don't know what's going on um, is the answer that we're supposed to knock on every door, but in this case we have, because it was inventory calling, which goes for every household. If people don't bother to read it, then there's little else we can do to bring things to their attention. The second thing is, I've had a number of people discuss this with me within my ward, and some of the comments are of the order of, um, I pay my rates, they still think you get that's that house in the stick, I pay my rates, and you're not providing the service. <coughs> and the only answer I can give, and I'm looking for advice here, is you're getting what you pay for. If you want a better service, it will cost more. Okay, we'll come back to that point, Councillor Chairman. Councillor Thank you. I, I have to agree with the previous speaker <coughs> regarding cost. When people look at their council tax bill, they don't appreciate how very little we get back out of, out of that envelope that goes through their letterbox. Um, and again, it's horses to water. You can't make them uh, read papers. Um, but uh, we are where we are. Um, we had, I think I was right in saying, <coughs> the biggest responses that we've ever had. Um, no doubt Councillor uh, Howard will um, uh, comment on that. Um, but back in the day, seven years ago, or whatever it was, five years ago, um, when Enterprise first came along, um, the complaints, inverted commas complaints, spiked for the first week and then tailed off. But when it's a complaint, a service request, you forgot to pick up my bin, is not a complaint, it's a request that, oh, you forgot my bin, was this an oversight or what? So we have to separate complaints from <coughs> 
service requests. Um, I do agree with, um, partially with regards to dog food bins, but then I've been an advocate. If you've got a dog, then you should take it home. Um, however, um, I, I welcome the report. I'm quite excited about three week bin collections. I think it will go a long way to easing all the clutter and rubbish that, that is lying around. Um, on, on a weekly basis. We're, we're not changing anything appertaining to food um, and uh, I, I think it's a way forward, Chairman. Happy to agree with it. Thank you, Mr. Lee, Council. One of the benefits seen elsewhere, of course, is the amount of waste that's recycled increases and the amount of waste going to the landfill decreases, yeah. which obviously we all welcome. Councillor Irving Swift. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, two observations. Uh, as you know, we had cleanup for the Queen, yes. and that was a great success. I wish maybe we could do that more in both villages uh, because it brings the community. So if we could do that on a yearly basis, clean up our district. And, and also it makes people aware how many uh, people's forces, and you don't see it, but when you start cleaning, it's quite amazing. Um, secondly, um, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Rory Stewart, uh, the MP wrote uh, a very good article about uh, the state of uh, West Collection in England and he's trying to have um, a parliament debating how West Collection are going to be done because he would like something uniform across England. So now if that happened, because when you have a law, if the MP decides, have we factor a risk if suddenly there's a law change and we have an imposition? So we have a service that we have at the moment. But if the law change, have we factor that? Because I do think things are moving quite, well, maybe now or now not with Brexit, I don't know. But um, I think it's true that as a councillor, um, uh, no, sorry, I forgot your name. I, I have uh, Gifford, sorry, the joke, um, said, uh, some council do exactly what we are proposed to do, some differently. So have we factor if there is a law that impose us a way, have we factor that on? Okay, in thank you, Kat. I mean, to Council Gilbert, we come back at the end yeah. on that last point. Thank I think you. Maria Taylor, just to go to the first point. Uh, yeah, thank you for your comments about clean and clean for green, because that really was very successful. Lots of different community projects all around the district. We did that under the, uh, under the umbrella of the Clean Up Community. And we'd be pleased to know we have got lots of different campaigns planned. For example, the Environmental Heroes Project is all about replicating good practice on places like the Grange and more recently in Southbrook. And other villages have got their regular things going on. So we're capturing that and helping that grow in other places as well, facilitating lots more um, community cleanups and so on. There's going to be a dog mess summer campaign um, launching in a couple of weeks for about six weeks with lots of parish council involvement. They have been the response to that so far has been very positive, um, and we'll be reporting again in about 12 months uh, about the ongoing of my community. Thank you, Steve. Thank uh, Council Warren. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'd, I'd just like to uh, take up on uh, Council Rand's point where you mentioned uh, Malton and Alston. The residents there are very well informed concerning their consultations. Um, the parish councils of both Oweston and Malton have taken a very proactive role in, in promoting both the consultation and the information that, as Councillor Charter said, it did go out in the court um, calling. It was also on uh, the website yeah. of, the, of the council. Um, it's, it's out there, everybody knows about it. Lots of residents in, in Malton have commented on the consultation, so they are very aware of it. I think the point you're making, Councillor Warren, is that it's out there in the ether. People want to look, but they can find it. And so you can never say everybody doesn't know, everybody knows. But the point is, it's there, and if people want to find it, they do know about the rural areas and the town. Lots of people are aware, and the consultation was very well responded to. That's so right. It's a duty for all our councillors here, whichever part we come from, to actually help get that message out there. I certainly have people approaching me on this basis. I just explain what's going well, on. I, I know Malton and Oisden have both put it in their parish magazines. Um, so, yeah, they, they are very well informed concerning this particular consultation. Well, nice to hear that, Councillor Warren. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Osborne. Yeah, I was a sinner, Chairman. I wasn't a very good recycler at all. 
Um, in those accounts. In fact, <laughs> a terrible one. And then I got three grandchildren that come to stay regular, and um, they taught me. They taught me very much. And now part of my um, life in getting up in the morning is when they've been there the night before and the day before is I can see the bottles, I can see the plastic containers, the bits that have been in the bowl to be washed and the cardboard is there and I go out to the boxes and I go out to the appropriate bins and put them in. I, I used to stick everything in the black bin virtually. I, I was not very good at all. But now I, I must say I, I hardly put anything at all into the black bin. Um, and I have to say, I, I listen to, to Wendy quite, quite, a, quite a bit, but I can't agree with her on the black bin. I've gone from a, from a system of filling a, a, a black bin that full and overflowing to hardly putting anything in it. After all, what do you need to put in? Your food goes in your food bin. Your cardboard goes in your cardboard box. Your plastic bottles and your and your metal bottles, uh, some metal bottles, glass <laughs> bottles go into another container. So there's not much left. Um, I'm certainly using, putting less and less and less in. And uh, I can't see, I can't see any logical reason to keep, um, uh, you know, more black bin service after two weeks. I honestly can't. Well, it's very nice to hear all that, Steve, actually, because you're quite right about young people teaching older people. Yeah. Well, yeah. But also, like yeah. yourself, where you got used to doing the black bin only, you know, and converted into yeah, really a really good recycling, which is great news. So well done to you. Councillor Wesley. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, I, do actually, I do actually think this, uh, this is really, really workable, this, uh, this scheme. But I think if we go back to the consultation, um, we may say it's the, about the best one that we've ever done, but to me it is still disappointing. And it's always disappointing that people just seem to ignore the stuff that you put in front of them until it actually happens. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe we should be just trying to be a little bit more inventive around this and coming up with, uh, with, some, more, with some more aspects of it. And I think it is absolutely essential if people are going to take this on board without difficulty that we continue to bang this message home about what the system is and not just not just drop it. It's got to be continuous. And I mean I'm just thinking that you know sort of suggesting the obvious place to get information to people is actually on their bins, for instance. You know, with a with a self adhesive with a self adhesive leaflet on the lid, which I know has been done before. And that way, you know, just right stick it in front of people's noses so they have got an understanding of it. Because you'll always get people claiming that they know nothing about it, claiming that they weren't spoken to, claiming etc. etc. and not bothering to go on to the consultation site. And, you know, you can't assume that people aren't bothered because they don't go on to consultation sites. It's just one of the things that happens in the world. And um, you know, it is there to be done. It's a it's a massive opportunity to increase recycling in this district. And uh, and that is part of that education message. And uh, and I like cancer as well. I, honestly, I very, very rarely put my black bin out. Very rarely go on the road. It's, um, you know, and, and it can be done. I really, really think it can be done. But people have got to be committed to it and understand that it's part of it. Not, I pay my rates and so I can chuck rubbish everywhere. It's, it's people's civic duty to throw it away. And you've got to somehow be imaginative and get it out there in the world. But I would also add that if we are going to be doing it on this system, then it must be done absolutely right. You can't afford to be missing bins on the three weekly collection. And that, I think, goes back to what Councillor Randall was, uh, was alluding to. If you miss that three weeks, it becomes, uh, it becomes six weeks of difficulty. We can't do that. And it, the service has got to be spot on. Thanks, Councillor. Well, you've made some very positive comments there, I have to say. It's not just about the financial costs, it's about environmental costs. It is, yeah. We come back to some of those points. I know Wayne Howard, the communication board for help, will speaking in a minute. So I've got now a councillor Collins. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just one quick point. Obviously, the report is very comprehensive, and I think fair, and every effort's been made to get that message out to the local local people. I, I was thinking that uh, it would make some sense that in the interim, once we commit to this three-week cycle, that we try to extend the local tip hours for a few months during that process while people are getting used to it, it would make a lot of sense. And I do take on board the point placed about the stickers on the bins because I think 
That's also a very valuable point. Well, I have a sticker on my food bin, which is given to you actually. Yeah. A sticker on there. And also, people pull that from Envy because they might not have to put food in there. And then that thing. But Council, I'm sure Council Kilby come back to the point you just raised about the household waste recycling tips. Uh, I've got Councillor Wade Hallett now, Councillor's Communication Board. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I think we did communicate it pretty well. Um, happy to learn from it. Um, if you've got any advice or things you want to, that we can from you get better, I'm happy to buy you a cup of tea and some biscuits and have a chat somewhere and try and improve our communications, uh, Councillor Randall. Um, same with uh, Councillor Wesley. I'm happy to, if we can, move this forward and take it to the offices. Um, I actually have four people on my patch uh, come to me and ask me questions about it. I pointed them to the website and they watch the wacky little um, um, communications and then they start to send it on Twitter and Facebook and actually went round like wildfire. So I recently had one <coughs> resident who came to me uh, this week and said, if I learned about this, I want to a petition about it. So I gave him a copy of the Dalton Caller and I said, oh, we don't read it, we normally chuck it in the black bin. So, <laughs> I there you go. Now they've got it on board and they understand it, they're going, oh, we didn't realise about it. So hopefully, you know, we, I think we've done all we can today. Uh, we work very hard uh, with the communications team, but I'm happy if you would like to, you know, go forward for future projects as well. Any form of communication. Because now, can I start saying hits we had on that? Sort of video? I can't remember the exact amount, but it is. So the report is now, yeah. Yeah. That's what it's like. Great. That would be like, what, it was 11,000. 11,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's a very easy to understand that form. Yeah, and it was uh, very, very cost effective. Very cost effective. And we can use it going forward. Thank you for that. Yeah, and just coming back on one thing, on uh, recycling rates, um, obviously we were, um, Councillor Guildford <coughs> done a grand job when she was an officer here of promoting uh, recycling, and I believe we were in the top 10 or something in the country. Uh, recycling was going really well, and then we outsourced this contract, and then things changed. Now, to my way of thinking, we have never hit that target that was agreed in that contract from the time that actually that contract went live, where in fact we should have been increasing it twofold because there was more things that we were allowed to put in our recycling. We had the food caddy bin as well, um, and recycling seems to uh, go down. Um, well, I'll let Councillor Gilbert come. You're going backwards again, when you've got Yeah, Council. I know, but yeah. what I'm saying is, yeah. all this is about in helping to increase the recycling, and what I'm saying is our rec recycling was on a really, really good upward trend, and then it suddenly went on a downward trend, and, and again, it's how you actually are going to, you know, if it was, it, it should have been on a continuing trend. If it had been on a continuing trend, my way of thinking is that we wouldn't be in the situation that we are now. Well, Councillor Rebel, I'll let some of others come back on the detail of what you just said, because it's important to get accurate detail on. Well, one thing I'm aware of is that uh, it's all about money as well. It's always got to remember the contract we got was a really good deal for the taxpayer in terms of the cost. And all the other AME contracts, I understand, have been renegotiated apart from this one, the borough and ourselves. And we held them to that contract, so obviously, and there have been obviously issues raised, as there always would be in any contract. I think some of the points you just made there might be challenged by Sam and my left here. We'll come on in a second. Back to you, Joe, first. Okay. Feedback about what you've heard I'll, so far. Yeah, I'll take from the first point that was right. Yes, okay. So, going on the cost, that's to reiterate what um, you used to say, Brexit, 
what will happen to EU recycling targets, no one knows. We've just got to deal with the situation as it is on the day and have a, a risk matrix for the future. Regarding consultation, I still stand by what I said earlier, it's been a fantastic campaign. Yes, we would have all liked more uh, responses. Um, I myself went to every parish open meeting in my ward and explained the process as did um, other councillors in their wards. The video that was done by the communications team was absolutely fantastic. Um, so I think we got um, a fair coverage out there. Regarding stickers on bins, we can look at that in the future. And coming back to recycling rates, um, thank you for your compliments earlier, uh, Councillor Randall. Um, yes, um, they, if we all know the Amy contract didn't deliver what it should deliver. That's looking in the past. If it had delivered, recycling rates would be higher now. But let's look forward. The scheme we're proposing, um, other authorities where we've made investigations, putting this type of scheme in, will increase recycling rates. So I feel very confident going forward that hopefully this new service design will do that for us. Thanks, Lee, Councillor Gilford. Just before I get to what it's in, Councillor, in Swift, Nora. Uh, I see that uh, Wayne has, um, is doing something for the newcomer in the street, uh, a pack. And I think in that pack, in the newcomer pack, we should have something about the collection bin and the change and what they will do. So like that people, when they come in the district, will know exactly what it is because um, if they believe in Oxford Shire, it's very different from here. So when you move, you know exactly what to do. And if it's in that path, which is a very good idea, uh, that will help us maybe. Thank you, I'm sure Wayne's playing that question. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, just also for your comments on what's been said, some of the um, Thank you, Ellen. Just from your point of accuracy, it's not correct to say that the recycling rate has gone down since the start of the economy. The recycling rate is higher now than it was at the start of the economy. It's higher than it was in the last year of the in-house service. What's happened is not that Apple has got worse in terms of the recycling rate, but that the, the rest of England has got better and therefore a relative position has gone down the right. The proposal that reported in part was they decided to address that. <laughs> I think one of the things that's not coming through quite so strongly perhaps so far, we've talked about costs, we've talked about recycling rates, what we're trying to achieve of course, but also in terms of the system, we're trying to be easier for customers. Yeah. I think that proves useful to come through, pick up the recycling, easier, simpler for customers. And that's trying to respond to some of the feedback. Especially around the budgets. Yes. That's all good. Yeah, thank you for letting me speak. You know, I think it's really easy um, to uh, to allege uh, either everybody knows or everyone doesn't know. You know, anecdotally, we can give examples where there is a lot of people know and a lot of people don't know. But, you know, from my observation and from the, the discussions I've heard, I think our communication strategy has been innovative. Um, I, I, I think it was fantastic the way Council um, talks about uh, inviting people with ideas. You know, it is inclusive. We do want this to be a success. And communication will always be a problem, no matter what organisation you are in. But I've got to say that, that I think this council, the officers and, and, and the, the council responsible for that portfolio have done, a, have done a great job. And secondly, you know, this, this is about um, developing our recycling processes into the future. Um, and I also think, personally, you know, on a non-party political basis, this is a really good system. It's a good system meeting the current needs about what we're doing with our waste these days. You know, three weeks is, is, is not going to be a major issue. And it is about educating the public to ensure that when we live within our means and we adapt to the new ways of disposing of of, um, of our refuge through recycling and through the black pin. So all in all, I think this council, I think the officers and the elected members have done a really good job on this, and I think it should be something we should celebrate personally. No offense to those positive comments, Council Williams, much appreciated. Uh, are there any other comments from officers before I've gone? No? I, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to be the, the bearer of bad timings, but a number of members tonight have talked about this bin, and so we need to hit this one firmly, squarely between the eyes, because it's a big district, 257 square miles. 
there will be occasions, no matter what system we put in place, where there will be misspins. I think the important message tonight is that how we deal with this problems is not key. Not that there can never be a guarantee there won't be any misspins, because anyone sitting here telling me that's going to happen, I can assure you I've seen both in-house and external, and it doesn't. There's always misspins somewhere. But I think it's how we deal with them is the important. And it is a complaint to have some spin, and therefore, how you deal with complaints is always you get a positive action. You deal with it well, it's a positive, people remember that. If you deal with a complaint well, people remember that. Are there any other comments on this before we come to the conclusion of accepting the recommendations before you that's free? Are you happy to set all through the recommendations? Great. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gilford. Uh, resources issues. I said earlier, item 81 is referred to later on in the agenda. And as John Shepherd called off this morning to the first of these, he couldn't make it this evening. Um, I was going to ask Audrey to take us through Treasury Management Annual Report 2015-16. <coughs> I'll one by one, Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Treasury Management. Uh, this is a fun, the final in a series of reports that gives details of the Treasury activities and outcomes throughout 2015-16. It confirms that uh, all investments uh, were placed within our policies and procedures that are agreed by members. Um, if we go on to page two, just as a matter of interest, we really, we give a bit of an update there on what we, our thoughts were on the economy and interest rates. Uh, and you'll know that throughout 2015-16, prior to Brexit or anything else, there was talks of interest rates potentially going up um, and obviously with today's uh, announcement that it was strongly expected that it would go down and that just gives you a taste of sort of markets will react on what they think will happen let alone what does happen so so we've operated in, in, in a time that there's still lots of volatility where we've uh, concentrated on security of our investments rather than the yield. Um, so our final outturn for 2015-16, the general return was around 0.76%, which uh, doesn't sound like a great deal, but actually within the constraints that we operate, it was excellent. <coughs> Many thanks, Alder. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Paul. Yes, yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Pate. Uh, 140. I'm fine. Starts on 147. Sorry? Starts on page 147. 14. That starts on page 147. Oh, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. You can talk about the previous one. I've jumped jump one ahead. Stop it. Yes, as it goes, coming up later on, Councillor Paul. Thank you. Are we happy to set the recommendation? Three, three. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, move on to strategic planning issues now. So item first one is four neighbourhood development plan. Councillor James. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this report is to consider the recommendations of the examiner yep. following the examination of the broad neighbourhood development plan and seek approval to put the plan to a referendum. Uh, there are no issues with the Floor Neighbourhood Development Plan, so I can cut to the chase on this one and go straight to the recommendation that the significant progress in making the Neighbourhood Development Plan NDP by the Floor Community be noted and welcomed, that the examiner's recommended modifications in respect to the Floor NDP are accepted, Subject to a further amendment to policy F13.2, which is recommendation 12 of table 1 of the proposed decision statement, for the reasons detailed there, nothing significant. That the examiner's recommendation of the NDP as modernised in accordance with recommendation 2 should proceed to a referendum of voters within the parish of floor be accepted. That subject to items two and three, the proposed decision statement set out in appendix one be approved, subject to any necessary factual alterations. That the cost of the referendum be met from the in-mark reserve for the neighbourhood plan, for neighbourhood plan. So that should now go to a referendum, and if more than 50% of the people 
vote in favour of it, then it will be uh, formally made. From that, we do Thank you, Steve, Councillor James. Thank you for that. Uh, so, are there any comments or questions, first? If not, we have to set the five recommendations before us. Three. Mentioned already, the second item has been deferred to our September meeting. Uh, that's the multi member with the plan. So that's been done in September once more work done behind the scenes. We now move on to Barbie and Monday Mid with the development plan for Councillor James. Again, uh, this is to consider the recommendations of the examiner following the examination of the Barbie and Only Neighbourhood Development Plan and seek approval to put the plan to referendum. Once more, there are no issues with regard to uh, this uh, NDP. So again, I'll go to the recommendation that the significant progress in making the Neighbourhood Development Plan NDP by Barbie and Only Communities be noted and welcomed that the examiner's recommended modifications in respect of the Barbie and only NDP are accepted, that the examiner's recommendation that the NDP is modified, in accordance with recommendation two, should proceed to a referendum of voters within the parish of Barbie and only be accepted. The subject items two and three above, the proposed decision statement set out in appendix one, be approved, subject to any necessary factual alterations that the cost of the referendum be met from the earmark reserve for neighbourhood back. Thank you, Councillor James. Um, any comments or questions? If not, are you happy to accept the recommendations? Great. Mm -hmm. I think if I'm right in thinking, there's two referendums going up very shortly, one in Tilt, is it, and one in Stratton. No updates? Updates, sir. Yes, sir. We agree today. Thank you much indeed. We look forward to the outcome of those. Follow up to the West Ham one, which is only one so far. Uh, next item on the strategic plan is local plan evidence space. Councillor James. Thank you. The purpose of this report is to propose releasing, and I'll come back to this figure in a second, 5,450 from earmarked reserves to fund evidence based work for the Part 2A settlements and countryside local plan. Uh, since the publication of this report, that figure, um, it's been identified that there is a need to increase the request for funding for the open space sport and recreation strategy by £500 uh, and that is in the recommendation that figure of 3-1 would become £3,600 this is a result of further information that has been provided by the Thampton Borough Council who are running the contract with Nortop on behalf of the three authorities um, it's very straightforward, uh, this recommendation, uh, subject to that amendment, so it will be the, to propose releasing 5950, uh, that figure will be made up now of £3,600 in number one of the recommendation, the other item of 2350 remains the same. Uh, so I'll read the recommendation out in full, that £3,600 is released from the plan making earmark reserve to fund additional work associated with the review of open space sport and recreation strategy. The £2,350 is released from the plan making earmark reserve fund to fund the council's contribution towards a study of housing and support needs of older people across North Anglia. No thing, thanks indeed, Councillor James. Are there any comments or questions? If not, are you happy to accept the two recommendations? Sorry? Three. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Can't say, Chuck, I do apologize. Sorry to be in use of Chairman. I just wanted to uh, reassure and remind people that although the uh, sword of Damocles hangs over the head of the Joint Strategic Planning Committee, now we know who the new Secretary of State is, I shall be writing to him next week. Um, wants to tell everyone who it is so they know. Was business is now moved to CLG, uh, and uh, but despite that, the joint planning unit is still in existence, and it's the joint planning unit that does the combined work that feeds into this kind of effort. So that's where we need the funding from. Who beat? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are we happy to set the two recommendations? Great. Thank you.
On the left side, the text up 200 pages of our agenda tonight, so it's quite a full one, which is a housing supplementary planning document. Councillor James. I'm going to read 200 pages. No, I was going to suggest you did. The purpose of this report is to consider the responses made to the consultation on the Housing Supplementary Planning Document, uh, SPD, and to recommend that following consultation some revisions be made and that the SDP as revised be adopted. Um, this is to do with uh, affordable housing, basically. Uh, we have been using the Affordable Housing SPD document, December 2012, um, that uh, contains some useful information and guidance, but has been largely superseded by the West Northamptonshire Joint Court Strategy and the evolving national policy. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, in fact, I'll come back to it now. The, the, uh, what we're proposing uh, in the 2016 is much more detailed than the previous one that we were using. It is very detailed. Um, there is an item there uh, on startup homes in that which may be reviewed as a result of government policy whenever that government gets round to, to doing it. And that may be later in the year, or it may be a little bit longer than that. If it is reviewed, then it will be necessary to come back to this and to review this particular document. Apart from that, I have no other observations on that. I did go through some of the comments on here, and uh, I did uh, go through the actual document itself, and it went straight out there because there is so much of it. However, I'll go to the recommendation that the suggested responses to the consultation on the housing SDP are set out in Appendix A be agreed, that the proposed changes to the housing SDP are set out in Appendix B, together with other minor editorial changes be agreed, that the housing SPD revised as per two above be adopted, that the affordable housing SPD of December 2012, that's the one we've been using, be revoked. Many, many thanks, Councillor yeah. James. Again, there's a good uh, example here of uh, consultation, consultation response, there's a lot of them, to what's obviously a very important issue for many people in our district and town. Okay, open for comments and questions. All right, we well, are, Councillor James. So, uh, there's four recommendations. Are you all happy to approve them? Really? There's uh, two more to go. Uh, housing implementation strategy. Mm. Councillor James. Uh, the purpose of this report is to seek agreement to consult with stakeholders on the draft housing implementation strategy and to call upon neighbouring authorities to collaborate <coughs> on the production and implementation of a strategy for the Northampton related development area. So this in essence is to do with, uh, it is an exercise in consultation uh, to, and to call on neighbouring authorities uh, to, to do likewise and to prepare a similar strategy. Uh, the actual result, what we're resolving is that the consultation be undertaken on the draft housing implementation strategy, appendix A, that Northampton Borough, South Northamptonshire and Welling Borough Borough Councils be called upon to, with Duntry District Council, prepare and implement a similar strategy for the Northampton related area. <coughs> the consultation has been extended to an eight week period and will also include the parish councils as well. And that is not quite such a long document as the previous one. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Lee, for the presentation. I have two resolved items here, right, committee. Any questions or comments? Are we happy to approve the resolved items? Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. Uh, I've got one last item under your uh, portfolio, which is the Overson Hall restoration, progress and proposed memorandum of understanding. 
the purpose of this report is to seek approval for an approach to take forward the restoration of Overton Hall. Uh, the, there has been an initiative to try and save Overton Hall. It's a very worthy one too, and this council should congratulate itself, uh, the officers and those councils involved, for the uh, brought it to its present position because it looks as though there might be a little bit of light in the tunnel and we can actually um, save Overston Hall and restore it. Um, the recommendation is that the council will work in partnership with the new owner of Overston Hall to achieve its restoration based on the approach in the historic England policy on enabling development. That's giving something in order to get a benefit uh, for the public <coughs> in simple Two, that the capital budget of 750000 for Overston Hall restoration is reduced to 225000 113000 in 2017 of the 18 and 112000 in 2018 of the 19 Three, that the revenue budget of 75000 in 2016-17 for Overston Hall restoration is deleted. So, with luck, the Council's financial uh, commitments can be substantially reduced no. by going ahead with this particular enabling policy. Yes, it is. Good news. So, thank you for that. Any comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Chant first. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, as you know, I have a particular interest in this subject uh, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do so. Uh, I'm very, very pleased, uh, both as someone who's been involved and also as still the Council's Heritage Champion, to, to note this report that there does appear at last to be a sign of real progress with this project. Um, the business about reducing our capital budgets and deleting the revenue budget is simply because we no longer have any responsibility as owner because we, we, we don't own it. It's, it's clearly owned by somebody else who is taking a responsible approach. A previous owner may not have done so. Uh, and uh, so I'm very pleased indeed to see this report and I look forward with some interest as to what happens in the future. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Councillor so Councillor, my point Yeah, um, a couple of points I was going to make have uh, just been stated by <coughs> Councillor Chandler, but I, I, I would just uh, add to it that this has been hanging around for a hell of a long time. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> I think with this approach, it looks as though finally we are getting somewhere. I sincerely hope so. Mm -hmm. And I would certainly welcome this report and support it. Thanks, Councillor are you happy to accept the recommendations? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you, Councillor James. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. We now go back to item 8.1, resources issues, which is 2016-17, capital and revenue budget, a new return financial plan. Again, as Councillor Shepherd called off today with a short notice, I'd ask you all to do that to the next report. Members, this, this report in front of you uh, actually calls together uh, all of the information that you've sort of approved throughout the evening uh, on various other reports. Uh, so if we move over on to page 138, you'll see that um, throughout, right down to section C, all of the items <coughs> in this report are referring you to other reports elsewhere on tonight's agenda yep. uh, and are here for completeness in, in the impact that all of those decisions have on the medium term financial plan. In addition to that, there is section D that sort of gives you the final outturn position now that we've closed the 2015-16 accounts and goes on in section 4 to show you what that does to the medium term financial plan. Um, we see that at the close of 2015-16, we have uh, non-earmarked reserves carried forward of 7.43 million, uh, dropping down to just over 6 million 
by the time we get to 2020-21. Uh, a very healthy position for the authority, uh, but I would draw members' attention to the deficit position that's also projected within that period of time as being two and a half million pounds by the time we get to 2021. Um, so whilst those reserves are very healthy, uh, it would not be sustainable going forward without further action being taken to bring us back to a sustainable position. Moving on to the capital programme. Uh, as you know, throughout the, uh, the life of the programme, there are some very ambitious projects on there, um, some of which uh, have to move from various periods um, depending on uh, the outcome of works undertaken. Um, actually, before we get to that bit, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We have some growth options uh, presented here. Uh, in 5.1, members have actually already agreed the extension to Daventry Country Park. And when we put those two members as a project, there's obviously additional uh, works that have to be done, not least of which one of them was to get planning permission. Unfortunately, the surface that was proposed wasn't uh, acceptable to planners and we had to change it, uh, which has resulted in an additional £45,000. That's to do with the car park, not the country park. Yes, sorry, the car park being the country park, yeah. Uh, the second item of growth uh, that we're proposing, within um, section 106, is there's often um, headings in there that say, um, for instance, in this case, uh, infrastructure items um, for the voluntary sector. Um, so it's not prescriptive, and what we're proposing is to put £50,000 into the base budget that can then be determined on, on for application to be given out as grant funding to the communities and using that section 106 means to, to fund it. Um, you also have, um, it's, I think, uh, 5.3, correct me if I'm wrong, is that part of the pink papers? Flood defences. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So there's a report coming up uh, on flood defences that, that will require a growth item of £15,000. In addition, they have Overston Hall, as we just stated earlier. So moving on then, we have this slippage of existing schemes. Uh, and we give details here of those schemes in excess of 50,000. We're proposed to go through all of those. We'll be happy to take questions later. And then in 5.6, there are a number of smaller schemes uh, that require slippage from 16, 15, 16 into 16, 17. And sometimes we have acceleration as well, so there's a couple of small items there where we'll bring the work forward uh, as a result of looking at capacity and resources. At 5.8, as you know, we have a, a capital team that deliver this ambitious programme. And in addition to that, with the introduction of SIL, uh, the community infrastructure levy, there will also be some capital schemes uh, that the teams will be working on. And it's right for us to charge some of those uh, staff costs to the SIL programme, which means that they can be removed from uh, use uh, in our capital receipts. So in addition to the spend, uh, we also review what income we're going to get, and in 5.9 it details uh, the significant moves in terms of Site 3 and Daventry water space. Again, I don't propose to go through that, but we'll have to take questions at the end. With right to buy, uh, members all know from previous years that we haven't filled that into the base budget because of the demand nature uh, of right to buy sales um, and sometimes when right to buy discounts are introduced or they're boosted and we see ups and downs throughout that. But I think um, based on sort of historical data now, I'm confident that we can put a prudent figure in there for right to buy sales of £250,000 per annum going forward. Uh, and this is in the spirit of when we set uh, the base budgets, where we looked at planning income, for instance, where yes, it's volatile, it's demand led, um, but it's right and proper to recognise where we think we can, 
so that decisions can be made based on robust data. So I've introduced £250,000 per annum from 1617 onwards. In 5.10, after all of those changes have been made, this is what happens to our capital programme. You'll see that uh, the spending programme in 1617 is some £15.7 million. Pounds. And that does drop down by 2021 to 1.1 million, which is really the, the end of, of a lot of those programmes. And what we're left with is the rolling programme for things like DFGs and things like that. Uh, of more importance is the projected capital reserves, where we start off at uh, 8.6 million and end up at 13.2 million. Um, Obviously, there's some significant spending there, but there's also some significant income, and that's why the, the amount in reserves actually goes up. Uh, that concludes the report, and I'm happy to take questions. Many thanks to the auditor for that, very helpful. Uh, any comments or questions? Councillor Ball. Uh, I'm going to go back to that report now. Uh, 5.1. Five point five point one. Five point one. Five point one. Yeah. It looks as if the car park was laid and then it was resurfaced, um, so perhaps somebody could clarify that for me. But I would also like to comment on the 5.5 um, bullet point one when we're referring to commercial property. Interesting, um, more than interesting, very important knowing that uh, we're going or could go into a deficit situation uh, um, in the future, that 96% of our commercial properties are currently occupied um, and they're currently bringing in in excess of £2 million uh, as, as revenue. Um, without that uh, revenue coming in, it would be difficult, inverted commas, so, um, congratulations to the, the commercial property team uh, for turning that around and bringing up the occupancy to 96% and I'm, I'm confident that it will go even higher in, in the coming year. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Councillor Paul. Great, on the first one. Uh, with regard to the country car, country park, the car park, oh, um, it's, work has already been undertaken to resurface the existing car park, but the Item before members tonight is the cost of extending the car park, the groundworks for which were done before the bird nesting season, and um, applying a similar environmental friendly surface to the right. existing car park. So it isn't yeah. the same thing being redone again, it is a, a, a bigger car park that's being provided. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Councillor Hills. Yeah, um, as the country park is part of my portfolio, I'm very pleased to see that this is um, going to be carried out. Our uh, country park, I believe we get over uh, 400,000 visits a year. It is capable of taking more. Um, it's very well used, not just by the people within the town and the district, but from people from outside of these. And uh, I think if we can get this done, then it will certainly make a difference and even Increase the footfall, etc. Even more. Time work. Thank you, Councillor Hills. There's no other comments. Can we move to the recommendation on this paper? Or two recommendations. Are you happy to accept both recommendations? Three. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move to exclusion of public and press. I think on that basis, it's more than the room. There's no public press here, so uh, move to private sessions.